Hi, I'm Chef Joshua Riazzi from Boston's nonprofit organization, Kids Can Cook. Today we're going to make a simple coleslaw. It goes really great on the side of any kind of summertime barbecue fare like uh, burgers or, or hot dogs. It's a great side to go on top of pulled pork sandwiches as well. And we're going to start everything off with a really simple mayonnaise. In a large bowl here with a whisk, I've got an egg yolk that's been broken. And we're going to add a few things to that before we start adding our oil. With any mayonnaise or emulsion, it's basically adding fat and a little bit of liquid of some sort, something that doesn't usually combine. And the thing that we're using to keep everything together is the egg yolk here. Jess is going to come on over and help me make this, uh, this mayonnaise. It is sometimes a two-person job. You want to make sure that your egg yolk is broken at first, and you want to add a, a few ingredients. I've got the, uh, the base to this dressing. I'm not going to quite add all of this. This is a mixture of rice wine vinegar for a little sweetness and acidity, and also this is uh, cider vinegar. That's going to give us some more pungency. I also want to put in, at this stage, a little bit of salt. Not the total amount of salt, but just a little. And I'm going to really mix up all of those ingredients with a whisk. I want to be very sure that the egg yolk has mixed with everything else. You'll start to see a little bit of froth on top. You want to just make sure that there's no uh, egg yolk clinging to the sides here. You want to get all of that egg yolk working together to make this emulsion. And now the important part here is to add the oil very slowly, especially, uh, especially towards the end. But we're going to add it just in a slow drizzle to make sure that it completely combines. The way that you'll know that this is working is that it'll turn from kind of a liquidy mixture like this into something that's more rich, thick, definitely more opaque, similar to what you'd see in the grocery store for mayonnaise. So go, Jess, go ahead and start drizzling that in for me. And this is really why it's a two-person job, because you want to make sure that you're whisking fully the entire time here throughout the whole process as the oil is being drizzled in. You can really ruin this by, uh, by adding oil at, at too quick of a pace. That's great, Jess. And you can see that this is for the dressing pretty much at a, at a great point here, where it's nice and thick. It's very opaque. It still does have some uh, liquidity to it, because we're going to use this as a dressing. And that's fine for our purposes here. Now that I have my mayo, I can start slicing and cutting up some of the vegetables for this coleslaw. It's going to be a very traditional coleslaw. Cabbage, red onion, carrots. And it's really important here, since you're not cooking any of these ingredients, to get the cut just right. And this is a great chance to work on some knife skills. Very basic slices, almost a julienne, but you want to go for something that's similar to a shred. So I recommend getting yourself a nice piece of vegetable that's going to lay very flatly onto the, uh, the cutting board. With a cabbage, you don't usually want to use the center part here. It's just very bitter and very tough. So I like to cut around that core and get myself nice, nice chunks like this to work with. And then I'll just slice it very thinly, really taking my time to make sure that I've got pieces that aren't going to be too thick and too crunchy. Since we're not cooking it, the only real, uh, real action that's softening this up is marinating in the dressing. And that's only going to go so far. So we want to make sure that we get a very nice, very nice thin slice, just like this. You can fan this out and notice just how fine everything is here. The next ingredient is our red onion. And red onion, since it's so pungent, we don't want large slices of that either. This one isn't so much because of the toughness, but because of the, uh, the strength of the onion. And we want to just get it to the point again, just demonstrating here that the flat bottom keeps it from rolling around on the cutting board. And it makes it really easy to handle to cut these nice, thin slices. One thing I try to tell the kids is to curl your finger over like a bear claw and always make sure that your thumb is tucked underneath here because that's going to give you the, uh, the best security on cutting yourself. Right? Now that I've got all of these onion slices sliced really thinly, I can move on into the carrot. And this is pretty simple to prepare in this fashion because you don't need to peel it or anything. It's basically a one step. I like to trim the very edges off my carrot. And then since it's so, so large, I, I'll cut it in half so that it's very uh, manageable. And I'll start to just trim the sides off. And as I trim one side off, I rest it on that flat side. And then I'll trim this next side off. And then I'll roll it over until I'm left pretty much with, with something that's nice and, uh, and square. And now I can just slice very thinly strips off of this that I'll shred later on with my knife. And you'll see that these come out just so, so delicate and thin. And again, that's so that they don't cause too much resistance in our final product. You don't want to be crunching through carrot, but you do want that sweet taste. And the, the color is really fantastic in this dish as well. So now I've got these pieces that are 
very nice and delicate. We can bring this mixture over and actually season it a touch with salt. You always want to salt this even though our dressing is going to have salt just to make sure that everything starts to leach out a bit of its, uh, a bit of its juices. We've got a little bit of oil left that I'm going to toss everything with. Bring back our mayonnaise pretty thin mayonnaise for this purpose. You can see that we made this very slowly and took our time whisking it, so it basically is still, uh, still nice and opaque. If it were separated and it looked uh, like it wasn't still bound together, that's when you know that you added your oil too quickly and you'd want to start over again. We're going to add for our basic seasonings the similar things to what we added in the beginning here. Our vinegar, this is a blend of rice wine vinegar and cider vinegar. And we're going for a dressing here that's a little salty but a little sweet to offset some of those other rich summertime uh, barbecue dishes. A little simple syrup. We want to add more salt. Definitely black pepper, and this is fresh ground black pepper. Give that a good whisk. And now the last ingredient is buttermilk, and this is going to help to uh, give us just a touch more richness and it's going to help us get to that dressing consistency because with our mayonnaise it was just a little too thick to use as a dressing. And now that that's mixed together we can bring our the bowl over and just drizzle in enough to kind of coat everything. Notice I'm turning things over as I'm drizzling this in to take a look. You don't necessarily want the dressing pooled at the bottom because as this sits, the vegetables are going to release some of their own juice and the dressing is going to thin out a touch too. So you really just want enough to coat everything. And we're going to cover this and put it right into the refrigerator for about 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes what I like to do is plate it family style and let it rest right in that dish in the refrigerator. And really you can, you can let this last. Or, or sit in the refrigerator for up to two days and things will just continue to marinate and, and soak up all the flavor from that dressing and soften any longer than two days and, and the vegetables really get a little too soft. But now that we've got it set in a dish, we can just put it in the fridge and wait for everyone to come on over for the barbecue.